All right, trust. You hit on trust earlier, and trust is absolutely critical um, to leadership. And trust is, a, is an attitude that we have towards other people. Trust is an attitude that we have towards other people. So as an attitude, it's situation dependent, trust who to do what, when, and it's also subject to change. And this attitude represents our willingness to make ourselves vulnerable to someone else in a situation that involves risk. If there's no risk, there's no need for trust, is there? There's no risk, there's no need for trust, and all change is risky. All change is risky, so trust is absolutely critical to change. But let's talk about being trustworthy, because ultimately, we cannot control whether somebody trusts us, okay? You have no control over whether or not your people are ultimately going to trust you. But you have 100% control over how worthy you are of that trust. Does that make sense? So to be worthy of someone else's trust is, is our behavioral things that we can do to make ourselves better. And trustworthiness involves these three things. Ability, integrity, which somebody brought up, and benevolent intentions. So let's start with ability. Uh, you mentioned confidence earlier, and I'm going to say this uh, a little bit later in this session. There is just no substitute for performance. That is, our, that is our primary responsibility in the workplace is to perform our job, our given job with distinction. Would you agree? Just no substitute for performance. Regardless of what's going on around us, of how good things are or how awful they are, we have a responsibility to perform. And so I would tell you, if you want to be a good supervisor, you need to become a master of your domain. And you can never lose that mastery. You can never stop being good at your job. Now, as you supervise, clearly your job changes. And so you might not be doing all the accounting, but you need to know and be on the cutting edge of what it means to be an accountant, just as an example, right? You must be a master of your domain. And people have to have the confidence when they look at you to know you know what you're talking about. We don't trust people that don't know what they're talking about, right? So master your domain. Ability is very important. Integrity. Someone here mentioned integrity earlier. And again, it's a word that we often use, but really don't often understand. And we confuse integrity with honesty. We confuse integrity with honesty, where someone says one thing, and then they do that which they said they were going to do. And honesty clearly is important. You need to do what you say you're going to do. But you can be speaking and acting in ways that we don't value, right? You can be like, oh, I hate to do it, but you can be like Anthony Weiner, you know, uh, saying certain things and acting in a certain way, and that's, that's not something that we value, right? So to have integrity as a leader, you have to know what your people value. What are the things that they stand for? When they come to work and they want to be their best selves, what does their best self look like? And that's integrity. When you as a leader can speak and act in ways that people feel good about. If your speaking and acting is just consistent with what you feel good about, then people will look at you and determine that you don't have any integrity. You might be totally honest, but you don't have any integrity. Does that make sense? So integrity is values-based. You don't know what people value until you have a relationship with them. And this is the most important part, your intentions toward others. The research shows that of all the things that people look at when they look at us to determine whether or not we're worthy of their trust, it's our intentions toward them. And this, we don't, I don't use this word benevolent very often, I don't know about you, but benevolent intentions means, you know, what are your intentions toward me? Do you, as, as we interact, do you intend to do me um, to treat me, you know, the best that you can treat me. At least you intend to not manipulate me and abuse me. I don't know about you, but whenever I enter into a relationship with anyone, if it's going to be a substantive relationship that we carry on over time, 
That's one of the first things I want to know about you. What are your intentions toward me? Do you have good intentions toward me? Or are you just going to intend to manipulate? We, do we trust people that have bad intentions toward us? No. No. And so there's no substitute for caring. I'll say this again later. Just no substitute for caring. And this is the hard part when I talk about trustworthiness. I mean, I could, we can talk about how you can become better at your job. That's easy. We can talk about how you can listen to people and learn what their values are so that you can, you can speak and act in ways that they value. Man, I don't know how to teach you to care. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how to teach people to care. But I will tell you in my own, my own walk as a supervisor or as a leader, that became clear to me early on. And from not caring about people, only caring about myself and manipulating people and not treating them right, and it just doesn't produce good results. So I learned early on that I need to, to try to master my domain and start caring about people. Now, as you lead your people, I'll tell you this, people that can't do their job well, caring is a luxury. It's hard to care when you don't know how to perform. So if you want to create a workplace where you have people that are focused on caring about the people that are around them, help them master their domain. Help them become really good at what they do. Help them uh, so that when other people look at them, they see someone who has, uh, is confident in their abilities for a good reason. Those type of people now have some wiggle room to start caring about others. Does that make sense? So that's one thing you can do to help move people up that curve of, of caring.